You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle. You can find us streaming online at kexp.org. Happy Amplifier Love Week. And speaking of love, we've got one of our favorite bands of all time live in the studios today. It's the Mountain Goats. Welcome. Thank you. So great to have you here. John is concentrating. He's ready to bust into song. Take it away. The Mountain Goats live on KEXP. John Garneal coming to you live from the KEXP studios. Matt Douglas, Peter Hughes, John Worcester, and the Blood Capsules. When the last of the East Coast money ran dry, and the casually dressed bill collectors started casually dropping on by, and the residuals, were there weren't any more residuals, and me several months behind On the payments to certain individuals I strolled into the lobby Mouthful Blood capsules I strolled into the lobby Mouthful of Blood capsules I'm off the juice for seven months I learned to like living clean But there just isn't any money On the independent scene Not even if you're cutting corners Staying in place, eating a lot Somebody's gotta pay the gas bill It's not gonna go away on its own I strolled into the lot Mouthful blood capsules. I stole into the line. Mouthful blood capsules. I'm the biggest guy on the bank. Line. Everybody else looks tiny. I can almost smell the fear on the lunch hour car salesman behind me. I guess I'll see you when I see you I can't work any other job This was my last and best idea I stole into the lobby Mouthful Blood capsule I stole into the lobby Mouthful Blood capsule That was wonderful. The Mountain Goats live on KEXP Blood Capsules from Beat the Champ. And so excited to have them in studio today. Tonight they're playing at the Tractor Tavern here in Seattle. And the newest album called Goths. And as John moves behind the roads, I believe we're going to play something from that new record. There's indifference on the wind, but a faint gust of hope, and a club nobody goes to, with a musty velvet rope, guys in motorhead jackets, who knew him way back when, haven't raised a drink in years, but now meet up again, to remember how it was when they all thought they'd move away, and ride in Lotus 7s through the London streets one day. Where the drive 
mustard fog machine in a concrete storage space. Letter number combinations with no meaning on its face. They won't make these anymore. It's a wooden coach and floor. No one will even steal it if you leave it by the door. No sign the market's going. No tombstone for its grave. There will be goodbyes by dozens. So practice being brave. Just comes in on a train, one suitcase in his hand, and an old army backpack from the Second World War, from a Leipzig secondhand store. Pick the keys up from the agent, everything's been taken care of. No big changes in the roadway since you left that I'm aware of. Few old buildings gone to dust. Some new ones in the way They'll look just like the old ones When the winds have had their say See the children down for love You'll all be back to Everybody test the memory But no one pushes through Come on boys, that'll be enough You'd think your old friends would The Mountain Goats live on KEXP. That sounds wonderful, and it is always so great to have you in studio. Thanks Thank for you. coming by today. Yes, thanks for having us. Love the new album, and you played something there from Goths, and then Beat the Chant before that, and fans and people who listen to your music know that you have mined all kinds of interests and life experiences for your records, um, wrestling for Beat the Champ, and you talked about Sweden, and I, I could go on and on, tarot cards. And the latest album called Goths, I'm curious, were you a goth? And no, but people always <laughs> ask that. Uh, no. I mean, the short answer is no. And the long answer is, well, I had goth sensibilities. You know, I had like a sort of personal style that involved, you know, not wearing any, like right now I got a shirt with a bunch of flowers on it and stuff. That was completely out of the question back in those days. The thing is like, what goth grew into was an extremely expressive sort of proto-steampunk kind of thing with a lot of crushed purple velvet and stuff like that. But I was into the West Coast style, which was considerably more understated. It just, you, you wanted to look kind of dangerous, like an extra from, uh, what's that, uh, class of 79 or something like that? that is it then? 84. 84, class of 84. Uh, you know, so, so I wore, you know, a little rouge, but not enough that you could really pick it out, right? It just sort of accentuated my cheekbones, maybe a little bit of coal, you know, underneath the eyes, but, uh, but yeah, and you know, I had my own style, but it was not, I didn't spike my hair. My hair was black, I dyed my hair black all the time, but, uh, but it was not a, not a performative goth, it was more of a personal look. I can see you easily in dyed black hair, but maybe yeah. not in Well, I did it in 2000, <laughs> to get into, this is funny, but when we went to do the uh, Sunset Tree, uh, I wanted to uh, 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 inhabit as much of my younger body as I could, so I started dyeing my hair black, and I kept it that way for a couple of years. Easy to see, but maybe not leather and lace. Yeah, no, I had a leather jacket. I left that on the first, uh, the first uh, Europe tour we ever did. I left it in the, in the driver's van, and that was the last I ever saw of it. It's interesting. Um, your music takes people to a lot of places, and you know, as you know, people listen to songs, and they put their own meaning and memories into it. And I feel very nostalgic when I listen to your music, and I read something recently where you said, 
obviously the past is a very rich place for writers to mine for right. ideas, but that you try not to go down the rabbit hole of nostalgia too much. I consider nostalgia toxic poison. <laughs> I, uh, I think I think it's what I mean. It's like it's the point at which you see it happen with every last one of your friends on Facebook, practically. When people say, "Man." That was just such a good year for music. You don't, you don't even ever want to say that. Right? Because as soon as you're saying that, then you are starting down the path to, this is the 50th anniversary of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And we all know that we've been tired of hearing that since the 10th anniversary of Sgt. <laughs> Pepper, right? It's like, because it's like, there's so much good music being made at all times. You know, the past is a super fertile terrain, but, uh, but you want to keep it complicated. You don't want to be the person just pining for some romanticized past because that that's... One, it's always untrue to be painting the past as this rosy place, right? You just remember your peaks better than you remember your valleys, generally speaking. But, uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, I think nostalgia is to be to be earnestly shunned and avoided at every pass uh, because it will make you old. <laughs> Since you're talking about not wanting to think of the past, um, you talk about being from the West Coast, and again, people that have followed you know about your early days uh, working in a facility nursing, and I'm curious. Um, what your path is? Where have you traveled? Where are all the places that you lived? I know that you live on the East Coast now. Is that too long of a list to name? No, I think I can do it. I was born in Bloomington, Indiana, and I was a little under a year when we moved to uh, Central California, and I think we moved around. I think we lived in Pismo Beach for a minute, but this is before I was conscious, but I'm first conscious in San Luis Obispo, uh, where I lived until shortly after my parents divorced, and then we moved it to Milpitas. And then a bunch of stuff happened. We moved back to San Luis Obispo and then to Claremont when I was eight. Stayed in Claremont until I was 18, lived in Portland for a year. It was kind of a momentous year for me. Came back to California, lived in Claremont for a little while longer, and then in Norwalk, uh, home of Metallica. And, uh, and then from Norwalk back to Claremont briefly because I could not get financial aid unless I stopped making money. So I had to quit my job and move back in with mom in order to qualify for financial aid. Uh, and... Uh, and I did that until I graduated, then I moved to Chicago, then Colo, no, Chicago, Grinnell, Iowa, Colo, Iowa, Ames, Iowa, and then Durham, North Carolina since 2003. It's the longest I've ever lived in one place. That's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> and we've been following the journey of your music from the beginning. We've been very lucky, um, and longtime fans know you started with a very lo-fi sound, and it's been some time now that you've been building on that sound, but... An interesting shift on this record, I think it's fair to say that Mountain Goat's records are guitar-centric, and I was surprised to read recently that piano, which you're sitting behind the keys right now, is was your first instrument, what you... Yeah, well, this is a Fender Rhodes, yeah. uh, which is a, a remark. I mean, the whole... Le George and Leo Fender are super interesting people um, uh, from Fullerton, California, uh, and, uh, and, of course, the Fender is, is one of your, your, uh, your archetypal guitars, right, the Stratocaster, and... Uh, uh, but they were curious guys who were still tinkering uh, up to, I mean, they, they didn't really retire as far as I know. They were still building transistors and stuff uh, until, uh, until they died. And the Fender Rhodes was sort of their contribution to jazz. Uh, Bill Evans used one on some pretty amazing sessions. And it's a, it's a super interesting instrument. And yeah, I st I'm, it's the only, piano is the only thing I have any formal training on. I'm self-taught on guitar. I'm not great on piano, but I can do a little, like, I was a, there's a thing in that song where, uh, where is it? Uh, Andrew Eldridge. So that's what's called an inversion, right? Here's an E. But an E has three notes in it, right? An E, an A flat, and a B. Well, you can put, you normally root it on the E. But you can do the same thing right here. Now that's the same chord, but it sounds a little different, right? I can do that on piano. I can't do that on guitar. I can't do actual inversions on guitar. So when, so here, like, that's the main chord, but when I get down to the, Andrew Eldridge, now there's my E, which was this, elsewhere in the song. I can do that kind of stuff on piano, and it makes for these subtle shadings in writing that are really, to me, more rewarding right now than what I can do on guitar, which is expressive and which I enjoy, but it's a lot more performative than compositional. It's like I can go a lot deeper at the keyboard than I can go on piano. And did you end up writing the full album Goths on piano? Oh, yeah. Oh, except for, <laughs> it's funny, except for the first verse through chorus of Andrew Eldridge, which was written as a sort of a Johnny Cash pastiche. Uh -huh. uh, it was exactly like Folsom uh, Prison Blues. And I wrote the first verse through chorus, and I was on vacation at the time, and I said, okay, stop working on vacation and put the guitar away. And, uh, and then I picked it back up a couple months later, and I just wasn't, 
I didn't feel like doing my guitar thing. And also, I had a two-year-old at the time who, uh, if you have the guitar out, he had his own needs for what he wanted to hear and stuff. Uh, but on piano, he could tinkle around up there while I worked down here, and we could share. Whereas on guitar, you can't do that. On guitar, you can only play it or not be playing. <laughs> so like, on piano, one person can just be up here just mashing keys, right, and doing whatever he wants, and the other can be writing down here. We could have a, I mean, all the demos for this record have, have babies on them. So. so note to budding songwriters with children, much easier to write well, you on got 88 piano. keys, man. Your kids can have the top 14. You weren't using those ones anyway. <laughs> you have to compartmentalize your mind because you're not listening to that song that he's writing down here. Oh, it becomes very... Uh, People with multiple children can attest. It becomes it becomes very easy to just you get really expert at tuning out frequencies. <laughs> I actually really laughed on the record. You write no comped vocals, no pitch correction, no guitars. That's correct. So I intended to laugh at that. That was very funny. It was like yeah, all yeah. caps. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's true. I mean, comping vocals is another thing we don't talk about uh, that much, but it's a, a whole uh, punching in is different. Punching in is when you have a take and you don't like a phrase or something, so you get behind the microphone and the engineer punches a button. That's why it's called punching. He punches the record button at the moment of truth, and you fix the thing you did wrong. Comping in the digital age just means you do a bunch of takes, and then the engineer Frankenstein's the best so-called take out of however many. I've never liked that. We've done a few that comp, but I've always tried to resist it on this album. I just said I wanted as many through takes as I could get, so you're actually hearing live vocal through lines. As, as, as much as possible. Thank you for clarifying that because I thought that meant free, comped. No. Uh, comped. Oh, no, free. No, no. So comped, <laughs> it, it means compiled, right? <laughs> you get in for free. You get this album for free. Um, you, you talked about your flowered shirt. All of you look very dapper today. Oh, Is there, are the mountain goats touring with a stylist? Uh, no, I got some new clothes for for spring. I got uh, got a suit made. This is I guess actually this is a shirt that uh, that I had made. It was for the first time These ever. These are our casual clothes. So My. yeah, this is Peter's not even close to Peter dressed. He just yeah. looks dapper. And Matt, of course, if you're Matt Douglas, you're just gonna look good. This is how it is. So. <laughs> Meaning no no slight. <laughs> to John Worcester over these, there. These burgundy pants were the last clean pants in my bag. So. <laughs> I would say uh, they're somewhat berry colored. <laughs> they're very nice. And uh, John with an H wearing uh, rust colored pants today. Say again? You have rust colored pants on. Yeah, you look well, very nice, all of it's you. It's only because he took berry. These, yes. these, these count as rust. Otherwise, <laughs> these would be berry or burgundy. <laughs> we're live in the KEXB studios with the Mountain Goats tonight. They play at the Tractor Tavern. It is always a delight to have them grace the airwaves here at KEXB. And what have we got next? I have a song that uh, Peter Hughes gets a co-write on. It's called Shelved. It's about uh, when they say an album has been shelved, that means it's been put on the shelf. You made your record, and the label heard it, and they, you guys couldn't come to terms on, uh, on, on what it ought to sound like. And if you're under a burdensome major label contract, they usually have the right to say, we will not release your record until we're satisfied with it. This has happened to a number of bands over the years. This is about an imaginary uh, band who's a new wave band who's being asked to, uh, to do a sort of a quasi third wave uh, Nine Inch Nails goth turn. <laughs> Nothing more delightful than hearing what a Mountain Goat song is about. Sit up and beg Not gonna do tricks Not gonna stand here on a soundstage Tethered to a crucifix The ride's over I know But I'm not ready to go I want to flash my pastel colors by the rail On a windy day at Pimlico Don't want to sit here with this clown they set me up with In a Los Angeles rehearsal studio 
I'd go on a tour with Trent Reznor Third of three, bottom of the bill You can't pay me to make that kind of music Not gonna swallow that Ride's over, I know, but I'm not ready to go. Karen was right on me, and I was like, no, no, Peter's going to sing next. You want to be over on Peter. He was the star of that moment, for sure. And that song sounding just as mournful as the subject matter. So, well, you know, it goes, it goes major to minor. This is the thing about this record is there's a lot of, uh, you're talking about piano, there's a lot of stuff that I just don't normally do on guitar. You know, Mountain Goats on guitar has gotten more complex over the years, but... Like, I think something like five of the songs in this record have modulations in them where it switches key either temporarily or modulates into a different key, uh, which is stuff I've, like, I think there's one song in the catalog prior to Beat the Champ that does that, and it literally only modulates on the last chord. It's a Chanson de Bon Show's on Lambeck Poppies. But prior to that, I wasn't doing any of that. And this one, like, to go from major to minor, in a Mount Good song, it's a pretty, most Mount Good songs, you know exactly where you stand at the beginning, and it's where you stand at the end, too. <laughs> but, but since, I think, basically since All Eternal's deck, we've been kind of uh, growing from, uh, into, into a sort of more complex looks on that kind of stuff. Yeah, there are hundreds of song, mountain goat songs that just end, dun, dun, dun. Yes, that are in D and that end <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> Yo, like you said, you always know where you stand. Well, <laughs> it's, right. it's fun. The camera should be on all of you. I mean, John over here simmering, and then he was so expectant. You could see the look on his face before he... Yeah, yeah, that splash is awesome. It's it, a beautiful yeah. role that he does there. It's really just, it's the best. I have the best musicians in the world in my band. One what else about me? <laughs> One of the best drummers in the business, for sure. And, and, and he's an extraordinarily talented comedian. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Uh, actually, that's no joke. And it's not widely known. He manages Uriah Heep. He, <laughs> All right, everybody shut up. <laughs> I don't know when you find time to slot him in. He's a busy man. <laughs> what else can we say about John Worcester? <laughs> We are so happy, happy to have you here. And uh, again, we can't thank you enough for coming oh, by. Oh, my pleasure. Can we squeeze one more song out of you? Sure. Is 2008 considered an oldie? You've been doing this for a while. You're going to be playing? Uh, yeah, the thing is, like, this one didn't really enter the set list right away. Uh, that's one thing you, when you have a new record, when you have a new record, you pick the ones you're going to play on the tour, but it's always really smart to leave some back so that you can go and rediscover them. And I don't remember when we started playing this one. I don't think we were playing it on the Heretic Pride Tour. Heretic Pride Tour was the uh, total um, uh, emotional collapse tour, and I do not remember doing this one, but that doesn't mean that I didn't. Um, but, uh, but at some point, 
at some point we started doing it as a duo and then we were doing a show. I feel like the first time we did it, you hadn't even rehearsed it, right? That, that we just sort of popped you in. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what song we're doing. We're playing San Bernardino. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that honesty. <laughs> I wish I'd said something that would have shocked you. Oh, we're doing fire editorial. Why? <laughs> so, my worst song. So, it is not your worst. worst no, oh, I don't What's know. What's his worst song? So, uh, no, it's a, a fire editorial is a hard one. That was a, a song that took a very long time to write. Um, but, uh, but San Bernardino, I think we did it as a duo a little bit. And I think, in all likelihood, we actually just had John jump in on it one night and I discovered that it worked well. sun was rising over the mountains, yellow and blood red. Like a kaleidoscope. Flaming swords may guard the garden of Eden. But we consulted Bridges on our tongues Holding on to our last hope And the day was bright and fine And the highway sign Said San Bernardino Welcome to Checked us into our motel And I filled the bathtub And you got in the warm, warm water I pulled rose petals from my pocket I loved you so much just then It was hard when you were brave, you are splendid. We will never be alone in this world, no matter what they say. We're gonna be okay. We were safe. San Bernardino welcomes you. That was lovely, San Thank Bernardino. You. I'm glad that made it back into the repertoire. Tonight you can see this fine band at the Tractor Tavern in Ballard and New York. They're coming for you June 23rd and 24th at the Beacon Theater. You all look and sound great. Thank you. <laughs> John, John, Matt and Peter, thank you so much. The Thanks. new album, Goths, out on Merge Records. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.